Hi, my name is Maria Pathlee, and I'm an Intel analyst at the Vertex Project. In today's video, we're going to be talking about triggers and synapse, what they are, how you can use them, and how you can create them. My teammates and I take advantage of automation to help us with our regular research and analysis tasks. Uh, one of the things that we found is that incorporating some carefully written automation can really help us because it lets us do things like lighten the analyst workload. Automation will take care of tasks that we'd otherwise need to do manually. We can also rely on automation to perform tasks at machine speed and with machine efficiency, as well as ensure consistency in how tasks are completed. Setup supports two different types of automation. There's cron, which are those scheduled jobs, and then triggers, which are event-based. In this video, we're going to be talking about triggers. Analysts can use triggers to automate common tasks that they want to take place immediately after a certain event takes place. This can range from um, more basic housekeeping tasks to things that are a little bit more complex or more involved. So as an example, uh, maybe I decide that every time I add a new IP address to my Synapse instance or create a new INET IPv4 node, I would like a trigger to go and enrich that node with data for MaxMind. That would be an example of a smaller, maybe housekeeping task that I just want to happen. Uh, we've also used triggers uh, in combination often with cron jobs uh, for more complex operations. Uh, one such example would be having a cron job that maybe daily goes and it pulls in uh, blogs that were published uh, through an RSS feed. It models them all as media news nodes. And when those uh, media news nodes are added, it launches a trigger which goes and runs and scans all the summaries of those media news nodes. Maybe that trigger is designed to look for certain keywords. And if it finds it, it's going to send an email to an analyst or create a JIRA ticket for an analyst telling them, hey, go look at this new report. It's based on a topic that you're interested in. Uh, so that's an example of something a little bit more involved that we might use automation to do. So I noted that triggers are designed to launch immediately following a specified event. Some of the things that are capable of launching triggers, some of these conditions include things like adding or deleting a node of a particular form, adding or removing a tag, which you can also specify to adding or removing a tag from a specific form, and then setting a property value. One of the things to remember about triggers is that they're only uh, capable of executing with the permissions of either the creator or the person assigned to it. So as an example, if I went ahead and I decided to create a trigger, I wouldn't be able to create a trigger that's capable of doing things that I myself do not have permission to do. Triggers also need to run within an assigned view. So as an example, I'm currently in a view called Intro to Triggers. If I go ahead and I fork this view to a new one, and I had uh, current triggers within my view that I wanted to run in this new forked view, I would have to go and move those triggers over and reassign them to that forked view. Somewhat similarly, if I decide that I would like to merge my current view down into an underlying view, and I try to do that, we'll just go ahead and do it here. It's going to tell me, hey, you have one trigger that's currently assigned to this view that you're about to merge. Do you also want to merge this down? I would go ahead and toggle yes, and then confirm and make sure that that uh, trigger that I have is reassigned to the underlying view when I merge. Lastly, if I decide for whatever reason that I'm going to go ahead and delete this view, um, not only is the view going to be deleted, but the trigger that's currently assigned to this view is going to be deleted as well. So if I want that trigger to run somewhere else, I should go ahead and reassign it to a different view before I delete this one. Triggers are also something that you can uh, introspect. You can lift, filter, and pivot through triggers the same way that you can as nodes. Um, so for an example, if I decide to see, I currently think I have one uh, trigger within this view. If I want to see what that trigger is, I can go ahead and run send trigger, and I can find the node that represents it. Um, so these are things that if I want to tag this trigger, I can go ahead and do that. I can tag the send trigger node. Um, if I wanted to go and lift all the, the send trigger nodes, I can do that, filter them by maybe condition that there's a line to run in. Um, I can do that as well. I can pivot from them. Uh, triggers are reflected within the Synapse instance as nodes. So besides being able to see, uh, lift them here in the research tool, which is only going to show me the triggers that are currently assigned to my view, intro to triggers, um, I can also view them in the admin tool. The big difference is that if I view triggers in the admin tool, it will show me all of the triggers that are assigned 
uh, to the synapse cortex itself. So not only those that are within my view. So if we wanted to see what that looks like, we can go over to the admin tool and see the triggers tab. And then we can see all the different triggers and we can see all the different views that these are currently assigned to. So this lets us see everything that's within the cortex. When it comes to creating triggers, there are a couple different ways. Um, we can actually do it through Storm, which if you want to use the research tool, you can do that. I tend to use the console tool if I'm using Storm. Uh, you can also do it through the UI, which um, you can do it either through the admin tool, which will show, um, and also through the workspaces show uh, tool, which will again show as well. So if we're going to go ahead and create a trigger, um, first thing that we want to note is that we highly, highly suggest that if you're going to create a trigger that you fork view first. Just make sure that you're working in a scratch space. So you can create your trigger there. You can test it there. Um, anything that you do within a forked view is going to be contained to that view. So if there's um, maybe some errors or if it doesn't run exactly how you think it will be, uh, you can just go ahead and delete that view and start over. Anything on the production uh, level is going to be safe. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. And we'll fork a new view. We'll call it trigger one. Uh, so I'm in my forked view. I'm in my scratch space. So from here, we can go ahead and we can um, create our new trigger. Um, the other thing that I want to note before we get started is that anything written in Storm can be automated. So when I'm typically working with automation, I'll go ahead and I'll just run my query first. And I'll test it in either the research tool or the console tool, make sure that the query itself works. And then I'll go and I'll create the trigger or the cron job. And from that point, it's really a, a matter of just making sure that um, I set the timing correctly or I set the conditions correctly because I know that the query itself is going to run. Uh, so it's a way to kind of uh, minimize down what you're trying to troubleshoot. So for this, we're going to work with uh, some YAR rules. Um, one of the things that we do internally is that uh, if we have an internal YAR rule that we've written that is very high confidence for us, and we're sure that, you know, we're pretty sure that this really detects uh, samples of a certain malware family, we'll go ahead and tag that YAR rule with CNO mal, whatever that name of that YAR family is. Um, in this case, we're going to be playing around with a sample called Froyo. Um, and what I want to do is I want to create a trigger that every time a file matches on that high confidence uh, YAR rule, this trigger is going to go and grab that CNO uh, Froyo tag from that rule and move it over and apply it to the file bytes node of the file that matched. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the new trigger up here. I'm going to assign it to my current view, which is trigger one. And I'm going to name it Yara match CNO mal uh, tag push. I'm going to try to spell things correctly. And then I'm also going to include a little note for the documentation, just in case I come across this later and can't figure out what I was trying to do. Um, so saying uh, what this is designed to do, I want this to run when a specific node uh, form or a specific form is added. So in this case, it's going to be every time a Yara match uh, form node is created. Um, do I want it to run in the background? I'm fine if it doesn't. Um, and then for the sake of this demo, we'll say that I've already tested the query and that I know that the query works. So we're just going to go and copy and paste what I have. So what this is going to do is it's going to take the IT app map Yara match and it's going to go to the rule that's associated with it. And it's going to grab that CNO mal tag and it's going to go push it to the matching file bytes node, as well as to uh, the different hash nodes that are associated with it and tag those as well. So we'll go ahead and say save. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually lift a um, sample that I know is going to match. And we're just gonna put this query here and then I'm gonna run it. Um, so this is a sample for a hash that we have that I know we have the file bytes node somewhere in the axon. Um, so we're gonna pivot from the sample to the file bytes node. Uh, we're going to go and pipe that against the yar match command. And then we're going to specifically run it against that froyo uh, yar role that we have. 
um, and it should go ahead and match. And then when it does match, it's going to create that IT app YAR match node. When that is node is created, it's going to kick off our trigger, which is going to go ahead and apply that CNOML uh, Froyo tag that's on that YAR rule node and move it to the file bytes node. So we can go ahead and run that. So here's our resulting file bytes node. And we can see CNOML Froyo is there. We can go ahead and pivot to check the different hash values. And it looks like the MD5, SHA1, and then the SHA256 node were also all tagged that. Uh, so that, at that point, we know that our Yara uh, rule trigger works. So if I decide that I want to go ahead and uh, merge this down because we are testing it in that view in our, our scratch space, I can go ahead and do that and say, go ahead and merge. We'll say, yes, I'd like to merge the trigger as well and confirm. And then from here, if I go ahead and tab up, now when I look at the send trigger nodes, um, I can see that this one was added. So this, I have two now that are within my, my current view. Uh, so that's what it looks like if you're going to add a Yara, um, or sorry, that's what it looks like if you're going to add a trigger to uh, your Cortex and you're going to be working through the UI, uh, through the admin tool. It's pretty much the same process if you're going to be using workspaces. Just make sure that when you're um, here, you're over in the views tab, and then you're in your correct view. Um, and this is, this is my current view, so I can see uh, both of the triggers here that I have. I want to go ahead and add another one. I would go over to the add trigger option here. And it's going to give me that same window that I saw in the admin tool. So the other way that you can add triggers um, is through using Storm. So for this, we're going to go ahead and we're going to fork another view. We'll just name this trigger two. Um, so we're in our new forked view. Um, and so if we go ahead and run send trigger here, we can see that there are no triggers currently assigned to this forked view. Um, this is our scratch base where we're going to test the next trigger that we're going to run. Um, so for here, I like to work in the console tool rather than the research tool if I'm doing something um, like creating triggers with Storm. Um, one of the things that I can do here is I can run trigger help, or sorry, I can run help trigger. It will show me all the different commands that are related to trigger. Uh, so in this case, I can see trigger add, trigger del, trigger disable, enable, list, mod. And then if I want uh, additional help for something, like say I want to know more about how to add a trigger to the cortex, so more about that trigger add command, I can type trigger add, tac tac help. And I'll be able to see more information about that specific command, um, what it's designed to do, add a trigger to the cortex, the certain uh, conditions that I can use. Um, some examples of what using this command would look like, and then additional options here. Um, so for this example, we're just going to create a very simple trigger that is going to enrich any uh, newly created INET IPv4 nodes with data for MaxMind. Uh, this is one that I mentioned uh, earlier as just like a housekeeping type of trigger that we can use. So for this, I'm going to say trigger add. That's the command I'm going to use because I'm going to add a trigger. Um, I would like to add, I would like it to run, rather, uh, when a node is added. Um, the form that I would like it to run on is INET IPv4. And then the query that I want this to run um, is going to go ahead and type this against maxmine command. And then I'm going to name this trigger uh, maxmind enrich. So that later, if I see it, I can go ahead and uh, know what this is supposed to do. Um, and one of the things to note is that I'm not assigning it to a view. Um, but when I create it, I'll show you that it's going to assign it to the view that I'm currently in. So I'll go ahead and create. And so I can see the GUID of our added trigger here, that uh, 12 of 5B. And if I go and run trigger list, I should see it there as well. Um, here is my little um, trigger that I've created. And then if I go over to the admin tool and let's sort by view, um, we can actually see that it was created here in this trigger too. Here's my maxmind enriched trigger. So it was automatically added uh, to 
this giant list that I see of all of the triggers within our current cortex. Um, so if I want to go and test this, we'll actually do this over in the research tool. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch over to the lookup mode, and I'm going to grab some IP addresses that um, are from a report that came out, and we're just going to use it to test those. I don't think any of these currently exist within the cortex, but we'll see. So I'm just going to copy and paste them in. Uh, Synapse should ignore all of the, the text and things. Uh, none of these currently exist, um, so it has 10 suggested nodes that it says I could add. These are all INET IPv4 nodes, so this should all launch our trigger. I'm going to say go ahead and create them. And so I created them, and we can see that the properties that uh, were added by MaxMind are here. So the trigger did go ahead and run. Um, you know, that long is all populated, ASN, lock, uh, things like that. So. When we added these, it launched our trigger, which went and queried MaxMind, brought this data back for us, and then we have all the data here. So we know that our trigger ran successfully. So at this point, if I'm comfortable with this, I can go ahead and I can merge this down and say, I would also like to merge that trigger that we just included. So toggle up to yes and say confirm. And then if we go and switch over to storm and run sing trigger again, and we can now see that our newest trigger is now added here. Um, so we have three triggers total that are assigned to my current view. Uh, so that's our demo for adding triggers within Synapse. Um, just in closing, triggers are another type of automation that Synapse supports, the other one being cron jobs, which are those scheduled jobs. Analysts can take advantage of uh, automation, triggers, and cron to help work more efficiently and uh, work more efficiently at scale. Um, on my team in particular, we use triggers to complete small frequent tasks that analysts would otherwise have to uh, remember to do and remember to do manually. Um, it helps promote some consistency and also helps us operate more efficiently. And in particular, it helps us get more done uh, more quickly because we are a very small team. Uh, so hopefully this video is helpful and gives you uh, some examples of how you can use triggers or and how to create triggers that you can use. Um, that lets your team operate a little bit more um, efficiently and get more work done.